Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing some shark test hands. So I'm really excited to do this for you guys because this deck has an extremely powerful Xyz-based deck that with cards like our number four and goes in match, we can totally shut down our opponent's fields. And speaking of totally, you can actually summon out multiple totally awesomes to your side of the field in this deck. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like getting your name, scripture, and single video, getting a sign cards and mail and even getting to request a deck profile every single month your patron along with test hands so without further ado let's get straight on into this this deck is an extremely powerful deck that revolves around making all sorts of different rank four plays and even summoning out bahamut shark so we can summon out multiple totally awesomes to our side of the field which is really helpful to be able to summon out those cards to our side of the field and with cards like goes and match in this deck you can pretty much lock down your opponent with your copies of your number four because it works like zombie world and rivalry of warlords where your copy of your number four is making everything water and goes and match is making it so your opponent can only summon one type of monster which is kind of cool one attribute of monster which is kind of neat because this deck can lock your opponent down like that where unless they're playing water they can't play which is really really good for us and really bad for our opponent so they're gonna go ahead and polish off the deck as you guys know that is dad rule number one so we don't break and once we go ahead and do that we're gonna go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see we can pull out because basically for our opening hand you're basically looking for a buzzsaw shark or a batoonable princess to be able to go into some really really good plays so let's go ahead and see what we can do for our first test hand we're going to draw into a copy of silent angler a copy of buzzsaw that's pretty good right off the bat a copy of goes and match we've already got the lock another copy of buzzsaw shark and another copy of goes and match because you really want to establish that lock don't you so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the very very simple play in this deck and we're going to normal summon out the copy of buzzsaw shark buzzsaw shark's effect is actually going to go off and we're going to be able to summon from the deck another fish monster that is a different name but the same look Level, which is our lantern shark we're going to go ahead and shuffle the deck and once we do we're going to go in for a very very simple play and overlay both of these for our number four on our side of the field set our copies of our goes and match and once you do you're going to be able to pass over to the opponent now this field looks a little bit fragile it's actually not because this card can actually pop a monster every single turn which is really good as a quick effect you don't have to detach your material it makes everything a water monster and when when you pop that monster your opponent takes half of the monster's attack points as damage and if your opponent does actually out this card it has the ability to special summon out two stealth spawns from your extra deck up to the number of materials this card had which is usually going to be two which then leads to a copy of f0 which is pretty good to be able to summon out an f0 on our next turn so at the beginning of our opponent's turn we're just going to summon or activate the copy of goes match after they summon out their first monster use the copy of the uh number four to be able to pop the monster during the end phase and if they do out this card you're going to be able to summon out those two other cards now at this point we're going to go ahead and draw for turn and we're going to draw out a copy of our sea nettles which is a really good card but the only downside of this card is it does lock you into water monsters for the rest of the term which is not that big of a deal but you won't be able to summon f0 so what we're going to do is normal summon out the copy of buzzsaw shark and then after you summon out the copy of buzzsaw we're going to use its effect again to be able to summon out from the deck a copy of lantern shark and once you do that you can then use its effect and then overlay both of these cards once you use the effect of your buzzsaw to summon it out summon out a copy of bahamut on your side of the field and then we're going to use the effect of both of our cards which is going to be the sea nettles first and then the copy of silent angler to special summon them both out to the field because you have to summon the silent anger last because it has the ability that if you summon it to your side of the field from your hand by special summon then it's the last card you have to summon because you can't special summon for the rest of the turn from the hand so we're going to summon out a copy of bahamut shark and then at this point we're going to detach a material here and detach a material material down here and we're going to make a copy of totally awesome down here and a copy of totally awesome down here now you could activate it before you summon out the second copy of your bahamut shark but it looks really cool to have the double goes and match and the copy of the bahamut sharks and then the double totally awesome on the field that's really really cool that you actually have all of these on the field like this to be able to get this really 
awesome play and this really awesome setup. This is very consistent actually to pull this off and to get this field set up where your opponent can't summon to their side of the field and they have the copy of the number four being able to pop and then you can basically just OTK with this field. This is very consistent to be able to do this because all you really have to do is draw into the copy of Gozen Match and be able to draw into a copy of Buzzsaw Shark. That's pretty much it or a copy of a Tunaful that then gets you to the copy of Buzzsaw Shark to be able to go into number four or any two extenders that you can summon to your side of the field, which is super easy. Every single turn, you're going to be making a rank four, which is really cool about this deck. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for the next test hand, because as you guys can see, this deck is really really good and really easy to actually pull off um, and see what you can actually pull out of the extra deck. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck again and see what we can pull off because this deck is just super fun to play and super easy to play too because you're basically just making rank fours over and over and over again. You can even make Utopia double and OTK the opponent's deck, um, which is really hilarious. If they leave themselves open for it, you can just summon out Utopia double, back it up with a toad, and then make it so that they can't use monster effects, spell effects, or trap effects with that toad one time and then basically have the utopia go in for game as long as they have a monster that has less than 2,000 attack points so now we shuffled up the deck we're going to go ahead and cut the deck and see what we can do so we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of ready fusion a copy of batunaful princess xe remore instant fusion and a copy of imperm which is pretty good you don't want to draw both of the instant fusion and ready fusion because you're just wanting one of them in your hand but you play it at three basically because you play two ready fusions and an instant fusion. But let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and use the copy of ready fusion right off the bat to be able to summon out from the extra deck our copy of rare fish. That does cost us a thousand life points, but it's not that big of a deal. And then we're going to summon out the copy of Batunaful Princess and use the copy of the Batunaful Princess to be able to special summon out our copy of Buzzsaw Shark and then target itself for its effect to be able to special summon from the deck and a Additional copy of Lantern Shark, which is going to help us out in the long run of things just to get that additional monster out on the field. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. And once you do, you have all sorts of different plays you can go in for for here because you have the effect of all three of these monsters on the field and you have the copy of Xero More, which can get you an additional monster. So let's go ahead and overlay to our side of the field both of these monsters to go in for, say, a copy of number four. Let's go ahead and make number four right here. And once you actually summon out that copy of number four, it has the ability that all monsters become water, but you also have the effect of the Exe Remore that can actually detach the materials because you can special summon this card from your hand by detaching two Exe materials from a monster that you control. And when you do, you get to target those two fish monsters in the graveyard, which we used both these fish monsters to be able to special summon this card to your side of the field and special summon those targets in face to defense. Their effects are negated and you can't attack or change their battle positions and they can't be used for Exe Summon except for the Exe Summon of a water monster. So we can go ahead and detach both of these materials right here. And then once you do, they will just come right back to the field. And now we can make the double Bahamut shark all over again, where we make the double Bahamut right here. And you're going to summon out both of these and then detach a material off of each one of these, like the copy of the lantern shark and the copy of the buzzsaw shark. And then once you do, you get the field all over again, but this time, instead of having goes and you have an imperm to protect the copy of your number four. So you have the play all over again, right off the bat to get that insanely powerful play on the first turn this time instead of the second turn, which is pretty good. All, but you do have a copy of Instant Fusion that isn't really playable in your hand at this point because you've already used your copy of Rare Fish that you have in the extra deck. So if we draw in the next turn, we're gonna draw into a copy of Desires. We're going to go ahead and banish the top 10 off the deck, which is one, two, three, four, five right there. And then one, two, three, four, five right there. And then we're going to go ahead and draw two, which is a copy of Gozen and a Silent Angler, which we have the Gozen now, which can totally lock down the opponent, which is pretty good with the copy of the Silent Angler, basically just floating in our hand because we don't really need it um, with the field that we've already established. So at this point, we can go ahead and let the opponent go, activate the Gozen, and now they can't have any monsters on the field except for the ones they already control unless they're playing water and this is actually what we banished which wasn't terrible the only downside is we did actually banish the double or nothing but you don't super need it in this deck and if you guys would like to check out the deck profile it is down in the description down below so that's pretty much what you get for your first turn which is three negates with these on the field and a pop with your copy of your number four so let's go ahead and see what we can do for another test hand see if we can pull that off again because every single turn 
you should be making at least one XZ flight if you have the zones to do it. Because sometimes you just don't have the zones anymore to actually pull off those plays because you've already filled them all up which is pretty interesting for this particular deck that you can just go in for all those different plays over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for the next work. Go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see what we can pull off. The really interesting thing is once you establish that field that we just had with the double toad and the double Bahamut and the copy of your stealth on the field, um, number four. And then once you do that, <laughs> you can actually put torrential tribute on the field. And if you put torrential tribute on the field and you have fury of Kyrushin in the graveyard, you can actually protect your entire field by banishing the fury of Kyrushin and then it just destroys their field with the copy of torrential which is just really fitting for this deck because it's more water um to be able to go in so let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see what we can do for the next test hand because as you guys can see this deck is really crazy um with what it can actually pull off as long as you open up like a batoonful or buzzsaw or two monsters that you can actually go in for the number four you're usually going to be fine so let's go ahead and see what we can do so we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of Buzzsaw again. We're going to draw into a copy of Buzzsaw again. A copy of White Mirror, a copy of Fury of Kyrushin, and a copy of our Tenyi Spirit. So this time, we're just going to go ahead and special summon out the Tenyi Spirit to make him think we're playing Sword Soul or something like that. And activate the copy of the Fury of Kyrushin to be able to search from the deck a copy of Torrential Tribute just to give us that additional play of protection, which is really good. Now at this point, you're going to normal summon out the copy of Buzzsaw. Use the Buzzsaw as effect. And then we're going to special summon out from the deck our copy of Lantern. And then you're going to go ahead and overlay both of these on your field because the copy of the Buzzsaw is going to special summon the mount to your field. And it has the ability that you can't activate its effects this turn, um, which is a little bit of a downside with the Lantern because you can't activate the effect to be able to go in for an additional play. But being able to summon out the Bahamut is still pretty good to be able to go in for with a totally awesome or going in for your copy of number four is really good. These are kind of interchangeable if you want to go for Bahamut or number four in this position is totally up to you or you can even go for abyss dweller to give them all a boost which is another option for you guys totally up to you what you actually summon to your side of the field now at this point you can go in for additional plays because you can set this card face down and once you do you're going to detach that material to summon that toad to your field and then you can use the effect of the white mirror to be able to summon back the copy of the buzzsaw and then grab an additional copy of Buzzsaw from the deck to add to your hand, which is pretty good because then at this point, you can just overlay both of these and then summon out your second copy of your Bahamut Shark, and then you're going to detach another material from this card to be able to summon out from your extra deck your copy of your totally awesome and then you can just use these cards on your side of the field um, which is pretty good because none of your cards are actually locking into you into water for the rest of the turn which is pretty good you're going to go ahead and send this to the graveyard these are going to be in your hand and then you're going to go ahead and send these to the graveyard to be able to summon out from the extra deck your copy of F0, which is really, really good to just summon that to your side of the field as an additional monster for an additional monster negation because it can actually live through a torrential tribute on its own because it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. It can just live through that torrential, which is pretty good. So once you pass over to the opponent, if they summon something that you feel like they're going to get past your copy of Draco Future, you can just use the effect of the torrential tribute, banish the copy of the Kyrushin to protect your water monsters. This just lives through that, which is pretty good. And then you're going to go ahead and use your toads to be able to stop your opponent if you need to. They're going to pass back over to you you're going to draw into a copy of xz remore summon out your copy of your buzzsaw shark use its effect to be able to summon from the deck a copy of lantern shark and we're actually going to have to use the extra monster zone at this point so because we need the zones and we're going to go ahead and summon up here a copy of number four which then we're going to use the xz remore uh, actually, you can't even use the XZ Remore because you're going to summon out to here and here. But if you didn't have the Toads on your side of the field, you could keep going because at this point you could detach both those materials, summon the XZ Remore. If you didn't have a Toad, you could summon both those monsters back and you could summon out an Abyss Dweller. If you wanted to summon out the Abyss Dweller on your side of the field to give all your monsters an additional 500 attack, except for the Atopic Future, Draco. Um, or the Drago Future, which is a pretty good card on its own just to summon out these to your field because you have pop and you have a double negate on the field, triple negate with this, which is really, really good. So let's go ahead and do another test hand and see if we can pull off for one more test hand and see if we can do some insane stuff again. Because you guys know this deck is crazy right off the bat. This deck is going to be even crazier once we get 
all the new cards out of the next Legendary Duelist set. This deck is going to get even crazier, which is just hard to believe that this deck is going to get even worse with what it can do. Like, I, I think this deck is just really good right off the bat. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for another test hand. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and draw, and this time we're going to draw into a copy of Potted Desires, Xero More, Goes and Match, Xero More, and a copy of Fury of Kyrushin. So this is where you get into a little bit of downside. We don't have any extent. We have two extenders in our hand, but we don't have a normal summon or a special summon that we can go into right off the bat. Where that's where Pot of the Desires kind of helps us out. So let's go ahead and use that Fury of Kyrushin. We're going to go ahead and use that card, and we're going to search the deck for a copy of Torrential Tribute, which is going to be pretty good just to help get it out of the deck. The draw two, hopefully we get something that we can actually use for our setup, for going in for some additional plays. So we're gonna go ahead and shuffle the deck up, and once we do, we're gonna go ahead and drop that copy of Potted Desires and banish the top 10 cards off our deck. Hopefully we don't hit all of our starters and we get one from this. So we're gonna go ahead and draw, and we're gonna draw into a copy of Lantern and a copy of our White Mirror. That is not what we needed, but we can still summon out to our side of the field a monster. And then during the next turn, we can make some more plays. We banished a copy of Fury of Kyrushin. Um, basically the other desires, one of our Buzzsaw Sharks, and a copy of Ready Fusion. Not too bad for the banishes, but I wish we would have had the Buzzsaw instead of the Lantern. But we still have plays. We can go ahead and normal summon out the copy of Lantern. Use its effect, and this card is the ability, if this card is normal or special summon, you can activate the effect to special summon a level 3, 4, 5 water monster from your hand. So we're going to go ahead and special summon out the copy of the XZ Remore, overlay both of these on our side of the field, and we're going to go ahead and make the copy of the number four. Number four is going to help us out a lot because you have the Gozen match in the hand, especially with that copy of the Torrential Tribute, and you have the copy of the XZ Remore that if it can special summon itself, you can actually use the ability. It has the ability you can special summon this card in your hand by detaching two materials from this card that you control. And when you do, you can target those two level four fish monsters in the graveyard and special summon those targets in face of defense. It doesn't actually stop itself from going in, which is pretty good. This card actually is the only card in the entire deck, I believe, that locks us into water except for the sea nettles. So we're going to summon out this to our field, grab both of these back to our side of the field. We are locked into water for the rest of the turn, which is not that big of a deal. We're going to go ahead and use both of these down here, summon out our copy of our Bahamut Shark, detach our copy of our XZ Remore, and summon out a Toad. Now, once we got that Toad out on our field, we're going to go ahead and use the effect of the White Mirror, bring back this card to our side of the field, and then we can search from the deck, if we didn't banish it, our copy of our XZ Remore, which we actually didn't. We can actually search an additional XZ Remore, which is pretty good to get that card out of the deck. That's the only problem with Pot of Desires in this deck, is you do run the risk of hitting some of the cards that you actually want to see. So we're going to shuffle up the deck now, and once we shuffle up the deck, we grab that card to our hand, overlay both of these down here, and we're going to do the exact same play that we just did. Make a copy of Bahamut Shark, and once we make the copy of the Bahamut Shark, you're going to be able to just summon out to your side of the field that other copy of Toad on the field, which is going to be pretty helpful just to summon out that card to your side of the field. doesn't matter what you detach from this card, and we're going to go ahead and set to our side of the field after we summon out that copy of Toad, our trap cards, and pass over to the opponent. I really love this deck because it's just so satisfying to set up these fields. Like, you even got the same materials on both sides, which is really cool. You have the stealth in the middle, you have both of these in the middle, and then you have both of these on either side. Like, that's just satisfying to me. Like, I really like that. And then you have the copy of the Torrential that you can board wipe the opponent, and you have the copy of the Gozen if you want to. And the next turn, you just go in for game because you can banish this and protect your entire field. This is turning to everything to water. This is giving us a pop. This is giving us a whole field pop. The copy of the Fury of Kyrushin is protecting our field you have the goes in match in the hand to be earth set to be able to make it so your opponent can only control one attribute this is turning everything into water so with these two on the field it's basically making it so they can only summon water monsters from their hand or their extra deck or their graveyard if they control a monster because they can only control one type of monster between wind water fire earth light and dark of attributes and so they can basically lock them into that one particular type with these two cards for water, which is really good. Like summoning these two to the field is just, or putting these two on the field is just an absolutely crazy combo in this deck, especially with all the different extenders that you have in the deck. And even with it starting with a bad hand, you still pulled all this off, which is really good to be able to just summon out all of this to your side of the field 
especially with a torrential being able to board wipe and these two locking the opponent down with a double negate. Like this is really hard to out for any player to out. This is going to be very, very tough if you get established into this. So I think that's pretty much going to do it for this particular test hand video because I think I've proven to you guys this deck can actually pull off what it needs to for this particular build. And also, got to say, really love this. It's super, like, you even have the synergy all the way across the board. Double Remore, double Bahamut, double Toad. Uh, your copy of number four in the middle and you have two traps in the back row that is totally like symmetrical like that's really satisfying to me. i don't know why i don't know if it's as satisfying to you guys if it, did, if it is give it a, the video a like it's really appreciated it really helps out and don't forget to like comment subscribe guys and i really want you guys to tell me what you think of this deck down in the comments down below you think this deck is going to get even more powerful after the support release in legendary duelist do you guys like this build comment down below tell me what you guys would like to see test hands of because this deck is just crazy good like i love this deck so much to play around with there's gonna be a lot of live duels coming up with this deck so definitely keep an eye out for those don't forget to like comment subscribe guys hit the bell in there so you can come part of notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys